Hello again. I've gotten some questions about mathematical proofs and it's probably worth taking a few minutes to uh, tell you a little bit about how they work and why they're useful. Um, if you're like most engineers, the very word proof just makes you cringe. It's just a horrible thing. And I'm, my goal right now is to try to convince you that maybe it's not so terrible, not that you have to get good at it, but you do have to at least appreciate the roles that mathematical proofs play in some of the tools that you use. Um, mathematics is very different than engineering most of the time because in mathematics uh, principles are established by rigorous logical proofs and once a proof has been constructed that proves beyond any doubt, not reasonable doubt, beyond any doubt that an idea is true, that idea can then be used as uh, part of the toolbox that engineers use to solve problems. Now, um, Probably the, th the most important thing for me to communicate about proofs before I try to show you one is the difference between engineers and mathematicians on average. I mean, we're all different people, but on average, mathematicians tend to be puzzle solvers. Not a bad thing at all. Once the puzzle has been solved, it's not interesting anymore. It'd be like working a crossword puzzle the second time. Well, it's not interesting anymore. Engineers tend to be process people. Now, I'm an engineer. I don't want uh, every time I design a part. I don't want it to be different. I want the process to be the same every time because I have to produce a product. For a mathematician, once you've constructed a proof, you're done. It's not interesting anymore. Time to go on to something different. And the part that perhaps infuriates or frustrates engineers is that every proof is different. Every one is different. So what engineers think of as a frustrating experience or frustrating characteristic about proofs mathematicians tend to think of as, as fun. That's why they're interesting, because they're all different. All right? So neither side is right, neither side is wrong. They're both perfectly valid ways to think. They're just different. You know, we always talk about diversity. Diversity is seeing the same thing and experiencing it differently. That's what this is. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the A proof, and there are more than, there's more than one, there's many proofs of the Pythagorean Theorem, and I picked this one because it's fairly easy, and I don't, I'm not good at proofs either. I can only do a couple. Um, so here's what we're going to do. If you look at the Pythagorean theorem, it says that if I take a right triangle like that, with that being 90 degrees, and right, I'm going to call these sides A, B, and C. A, B, and C are the lengths of the sides. The Pythagorean theorem. says that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And we use it absolutely all the time. It's hard to imagine uh, a, a more useful mathematical expression than this one. Engineers, physicists, everybody uses this all the time. Now when we use it, we assume it's true, and it is true. But it's true not because we think it's true, it's because somebody, one of, the, one of Pythagoras' group, Prove this. Once it's been proved, that's it. It's true. You can accept it. Never have to question it again. So I'm going to show you one way to prove this. There are more than one. This is probably not even one of the particularly elegant proofs, but it's one I know. So I'm going to, let's take a square here. Okay. There you go. That's square. Yeah, not very. Let's try this again. Okay. That's pretty close to being a square. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw triangles inside this square. I'm going to draw right triangles. Now, don't worry about who thought of this the first time or how they ever came up with it. That doesn't matter here. So let's just go like this. Okay, now I don't have this drawn very accurately, but let's say that these are all identical right triangles. So that's a, that's a right angle, that's a right angle, that's a right angle, and that's a right angle. It makes this kind of nice pattern, okay? Let's also say that these right triangles also have sides of lengths A, B, and C. Okay, so there's side A, there's B, that one's an A, B, A, B, A, B, I think I got that right. Okay. Let's figure the area of this square out two different ways. Right? 
So here's one way to do it. Make sure I'm in frame here. Okay, I am. C squared. C, C, C. Okay, C squared is one way to find the area. Here's another way to find the area. Four times the area of that triangle plus that. Okay, now this side right here, well, if that's B and let's see, that's A, that distance there must be B minus A, B minus A, B minus A, and B minus A. Okay, so it's four times one half AB because that's the side of that's the size of one triangle plus B minus A squared. So all we've done so far is say that's the area of the square, and so is that. That's all. So let's do a little bit of math here. Well, let's see. That's two AB plus B squared minus two AB plus A squared equals C squared. Right? No problem, right? So cross that out, cross that out. Oops. That's it. That's the Pythagorean theorem. There's more than one way to do this, and like I said, this may not be a particularly elegant one, but it works. And the fact that it works is all I need to know. Now, once that's been established, beyond all doubt, it doesn't matter what A, B, and C are. My only assumptions are that these are right triangles, and that's a square. So the assumptions are very, very simple, very, very easy to uh, satisfy. Doesn't matter what A, B, and C are, as long as I've got a, a right triangle. That's always true. Now, I, I can put this in my mathematical toolbox and keep it there forever and ever, pull it out whenever I need it. Now, clearly I didn't do this. This was proven thousands of years ago. Okay, So, there we go. That's, that's a proof. Now, all the tools, the mathematical tools we use as engineers, have been proven by more complicated means than this, almost always. But, when we use integrals, differentials, uh, derivatives, uh, Fourier series, other series, matrix manipulation, algebra, trigonometry, that's all built on a foundation of proof. Every tool we use has been proven to work, and that's why we rely on it. That's why proofs are important. Okay? So here's a simple one, and that's the role uh, they play in our lives, why they're important, and why sometimes they're worth using. You can see why a mathematician would want you to know what a proof was and how to do a simple one and to understand its role in mathematics.